My name is, like he said, Evelyn Wilson. And most of the time when we talk about black history, we talk about all over you know, the country black history. Very seldom do we talk about local black history. So we're gonna talk about local black history today. And that is Door Street. Door Street was fantastic back in the day. And a lot of us that didn't grow up in that air in that time have no idea what Door Street consisted of, okay? During the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, Door Street was the heart of the African American community. The area between the intersection of Washington, 17th, and Door, down to Detroit Avenue, consisted of hundreds of businesses and residential homes owned by African Americans and white people. Door Street was named after the city of Toledo's 10th mayor, Mr. Charles M. Door. It was an area where young and old would put on their Sunday go to meeting clothes, get into their cars, and cruise down Door Street, affectionately called the Strip, on Fridays and Saturday nights. It was a place where families would crowd into their automobiles to go out to eat, go shopping, go to the movies, the grocery store, and attend church. Door Street was lined with all types of shops and stores, such as grocery stores. And yes, we had a Kroger store, believe it or not, on Door Street. Okay? And it, if you, when you get a chance to look at this, Kroger store, there is a picture of the Kroger store that we had on this bulletin here. Okay? We had drug stores, beauty and barber shops, restaurants, nightclubs, hardware, jewelry, men and women's clothing stores, doctor's offices, lawyer's offices, bakeries, record shops, hotels, and churches, as well as being a place where hundreds of African Americans were employed. There was a lot of passion on Door Street. It was more than just a place to live, it was a family neighborhood. Many of you may have some recollection of Door Street as a booming community before it was destroyed as urban blight. Today, certain neighborhoods and commercial downtown areas are considered historic and are given city funds for economic and structural revitalization. Had the same treatment been afforded Door Street, it would still be alive today. Now it consists of few businesses, two government subsidized apartment complexes, a gas station, fire station, library, a school, Smith Park, a few restaurants, churches, and two small shopping strips. The rest is vast land, not generating any taxes for government use. Dating back to the 1930s, when Door Street began to prosper economically, to the mid-70s, when urban renewal arose and began to buy and destroy businesses and homes for the sake of widening the popular two-lane street to a five-lane through fare straight into the downtown area. Door Street was an awesome place to be. There were so many businesses on Door Street, too many to mention in this presentation, so we will concentrate on the two blocks that Toledo ones remember the most, the 1200 and the 1300 block. Now this area would be the blocks between the Clark Gas Station, if you all know where the Clark Gas Station is, the Auto Zone, okay, and then down to Junction Avenue, okay? Those are the blocks that, that I'm talking about right now. The NAACP was housed at 1249 Door Street. Miller's Hardware at 1245 was a long time fixture on Door Street as well as Roland's Credit and Jewelry at 1253 Door. The Lincoln Motel at 1259 was a popular attraction. And this motel on Door Street, you all, had 33 rooms and was accompanied by a restaurant, okay? Many well-known entertainers stayed there. And one of the hottest attractions on the Strip was called The Spot. Do any of y'all remember The Spot? There she go, <laughs> The Spot. Okay, at 1344 Door Street, they had the best shrimp in the city. Cars would line up trying to get a dinner all the way down Door Street, trying to get a dinner from the spot. 
All right, Thomas Temple, C-O-G-C, founded by the late Bishop C. Temple, was located at 1244 Door Street. The church is now located at Bancroft and Ashland, and I'm sure you guys know where that is. That's the Thomas Temple that used to be on Door Street, okay? While we're talking about churches, at the intersection of Door 17th and Washington, before the expressway came through, there was the one and only black Catholic church at, one, at that time, okay? And that was St. Benedict's the Moor. If you all remember that big giant church that was right where the expressway is now, at the very end of Door Street before you get to Washington, right in that area was the big Catholic church. The church was established because blacks were not allowed to attend the white Catholic churches, and later on, a school was established for the same reason. In 1965, the church was closed, and many of the parishioners transferred to what is now St. Martin de Porres at Bancroft in Detroit, and I'm sure you all know where that is right now. Jerusalem Baptist Church at 445 Door was at one time a movie theater. The Dixie Theater, this was a popular Negro theater, was established in 1913. They played some of the first movies featuring black actors. This theater closed in 1950, and Jerusalem was established as a church in 1964. The building stood for nearly 100 years until it was torn down to make way for Jerusalem's new edifice. Across the street, where McDonald's is now, was called Walton's Drugstore. That big rambling building right there when you guys come up to see this board was Walton's Drugstore, okay? And at Walton's Drugstore, we went to Jerusalem because we lived on Door Street within walking distance as small children. And so we would walk to church every Sunday. You know you had to go to church. And you had to go to Sunday school, which was first, and then church. Our mother would give us two quarters. One quarter was for Sunday school, one for church. We'd make the Sunday school quarter, but the church quarter didn't make it sometimes. Because <laughs> we, would, we would go across the street to Walton's and get real true penny candy, okay, at that time. All right, and um, three of the most popular establishments on Door Street was the m and Rendezvous Bar. That is on the board. You can see that when you get a chance to peruse. That was at 1303 Door Street and the Door Street Hall. I don't know if you all remember the Door Street Hall. It was a building where they had all kinds of parties. You could rent it. They had all kinds of concerts that would come in. Entertainment from all over the world would come to the Door Street Hall. Both brought famous entertainers to Toledo like Teddy Pendergrass, B.B. King, Wilson Pickett, Martha Reeves and the Vandellas, and many more. The Door Street Hall hosted gospel and R&B concerts, wedding receptions, birthday parties, and many other activities. The next shop that I know you all remember was Black Knight's Men's Clothing Store. Y'all remember that? That was the premier black men's clothing store in the city. They offered silk suits ranging from 40 and up to $80, okay? The highest price suit was $80. Can y'all get a suit down for $80? I don't think so. <laughs> They had Stetson hats, fancy ties, floor shine shoes. If you shopped there, you knew you were cleaner than the Board of Health. And that's a phrase that we say when you're really sharp, OK? Among some of the many other businesses on Door Street, you all may remember were Crown Cleaners, Clark's One Stop Record Shop, Walton's Bakery at Door and Ewing. They had the best baked goods in town. You could smell them all up and down Door Street. Mrs. Jett's Beauty Shop, Lydell's Barbershop, which is still in business now. It's in a different location, but they are still in business. Low Salem Kitchen for the Poor, founded by Pastor Harvey V. Savage. Dr. Hobbs' office, I know a lot of y'all remember Dr. Hobbs. The World Theater, Carp's Department Store, and Door Street Hot Dog, best hot dogs in the world. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to talk a little bit about I call it Door Street Flavor. This is about some of the famous names that added flavor to Door Street. You know, just made it so interesting and really important, you know, at that time. 
Art Tatum, we all know Art Tatum, famous jazz artist, he lived at City Park and Door. Smith Park was named after William A. Smith. He was the executive director of the Frederick Douglass Community Center for 20 years. Rona Johnson, she was the daughter of Richard Belcher, who was the founder of the Browns, Bronze Raven newspaper. That was before Toledo Journal, before the truth. Okay, that was our newspaper. Brona was, um, um, she described Door Street as a nice place to grow up in. She said on Fridays and Saturdays, people would cruise and talk. They would buy shrimp at the spot and then cruise some more. You knew everybody out there and it was just like a family. Michael Duckworth, you might have known Michael Duckworth. He was a city manager in the late 60s. He gave his description of Door Street in its glory days. On any given day or night, the brothers and sisters used to cruise up and down Door Street, pull over to talk to one another. It was just like a boardwalk. People would drive down Door Street just to see who was there. And I know that's true, because as teenagers, and when I first started driving at 16, my car was on Door Street, <laughs> just trying to see who was there, OK? And he said that um, anything you wanted or needed to buy, you could find it on Door Street. He said one of his favorite spots was the Black Knights Men's Shop. He said he got all his suits there. He loved their clothes, their hats, and their shoes. The Toledo chapter of the Black Panthers, because that was a little bit of a dark part of the history down on Door Street, but it was only dark because of what happened, OK? They moved to the 1200 block of Door Street in the 1970s. In just three years, the Toledo chapter and their leader, John McClennan, McClellan, quickly organized a free clothing program, free breakfast program. And in spite of the adversities and the state violence that happened there, until urban renewal came through, the organization continued to fulfill the needs of the black community. The Mott Branch Library, where we are now, this is the new edifice. But the old edifice in 1918 was this beautiful building right here. Okay, that's where the building is now across the street. Okay, that was the original building right there. Okay, the building was named after a lovely young lady by the name of Anna C. Mott. She was a force to be reckoned with. Anna was, ta was a talented hostess and social activist who embraced causes for women and the poor. She tried to do good and give only in her own quiet way. She donated part of her estate to the library, and they named this library after her, OK? All right. I'm on the last page, you all. Thank you all for listening so attentively. This is wonderful. OK, now my memories of Door Street, I talked about the, the, the Walk, walk, uh, the gross drugstore across from the church and our little penny candy. But I also talked about as a, right before they were getting ready to tear it down in 74, that would made me in my 20s, in my early 20s. So the nightlife there was good. We partied really good. <laughs> we had a good time. We had parties at the door hall. Our friends would get together and go down on Door Street, just like Michael Duckworth said, just to see who was there. OK, so my memories of Door Street were very good. We had a great time. And those memories will live on in me forever. Because any time you say anything about Door Street, I'm there. OK? Door Street was once the hub of the African-American social life and black empowerment. Many reasons were given by the city officials for the urban renewal project that seemed to the demise of Door Street. They said the buildings were too old, there was too much crime, the streets needed sprucing up. The only thing they did was spruce up the streets. There was no return of all the businesses that were destroyed, and no residential homes were ever built. If you drive down that, that area, there's no homes there. There's no homes there. Thankfully, there are some wonderful people working tirelessly on our behalf to restore Door Street back to what we remember, remembered and loved. And I wish them every success. Thank you all very much for listening. Thank you.
And I just want to say, you know, I, want, I think this opens up the question and answer period, but I just want to remind folks, if you've got a question or a thought or a reflection you want to share, if you could just put your hand up and we'll make sure that the mic gets in front of you so we can catch that on the recording, okay? I know it's a small room. You'd probably be tempted to just be like, um, it's cool. But we try to make sure this gets recorded for the audio, okay? Sound good? So right. if you want to. Okay. If anybody has any reflections, please, you know, speak up and say something, you know, about Door Street. If you remember, if you lived on Door Street or if you frequented Door Street, just speak up and say something. Okay. Anybody? Right here? Okay. Let me, uh, <coughs> You were talking quite a bit about the residential area there. My relationship with the door burn secor corridor was the commercial establishment and driving through there on the way to work probably uh, over 20,000 times on my, over my working career. And uh, things at the corner there. I don't know if anybody else can remember these. Raise your hand. Bauman's Auto Parts there on the corner. Yes. Yeah. And the little sign that said, we never sleep, and it had a little light. And our joke was, neither does anybody else around here. <laughs> and um, there was where Rocket Hall now is, was an L-shaped shopping center. And I believe, yeah, yeah. was it the Roman bathhouse that was in there, or was that the Jolly Trolley? Which was, oh, yeah, I remember both of those names. Yes, yes. But House of Tapes, when we had eight track tapes in our car, we would go to this tiny little building. Uh, I think there was a gas station on the corner. It was the one where that man was tragically murdered. The, um, um, and then uh, I think the Taco Bell, and then House of Tapes. And then uh, back in that shopping center was either Arlen's or Tops or. Okay, I think Arlen's was in there. And uh, there, the different restaurants that were along there and uh, uh, going down to the uh, big boy, pull in your car there then, and eat, at the, you know, eat in your car at the drive-in. And uh, it was just an, an amazing thing because it was a little bit of a, a real big downtown type area that you didn't have to go to downtown to Absolutely. see. Yes. It uh, all blossomed right there. It was amazing. <laughs> yes, when my um, husband worked at Owens, Illinois Tech Center, they would go over to Max Day's Cafe for lunch. I can't remember if they served uh, hot dogs or burgers, mm -hmm. and you could get a shell of beer there. You get a mm -hmm. glass of beer. Back in those days, draft beers were 25 cents. We could go out. Um, <laughs> farther along there, where the laundromat now is, was it was a uh, bowling alley at one time. And then it became the Draft House and became the Agora. And uh, oh, I, yeah. I saw Steppenwolf live there at the Agora yeah. at that. Yeah. At that, uh, Agora. yes. Sure. And uh, all those other little things that have uh, come and gone, but it all contributed to a really, a really cool Absolutely. part of the city. Was that where Hall and Oates were too? They might have. Sure. They might have okay, sorry. There. No, that was. <laughs> I don't have a lot of memory though. I've been gone for a long time. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. No. Thank you so much for that 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 trip down memory lane. It was, Door Street is fantastic. I just wanted to say too, when you guys get a chance to look at this board, this slip right here. I hope you can see it right here. This slip right here, and things change. Okay, this is at the time all the businesses that were on Door Street. And it even shows where one business was there and another business moved in after the first one moved out. So just take a look at that list and see all the stuff that's on there. There's no way you would be able to say all of that in a presentation, but this gives you the opportunity to know all the different things. I have the Benedict's Catholic Church is here, okay? The World Theater is up here where they used to put on beautiful plays, okay? Some of the houses, the residential areas where you can see how the houses looked. Thomas Temple Church there. First National Bank, we actually had a national bank on Door Street. First National Bank was there on Door Street. You have Walton's Bakery, there's a picture of the spot, okay? 
Then over here we got the Rendezvous uh, Food and Liquor, the M&L. That was my first time going into a nightclub. I snuck in with my older sister <laughs> to see Teddy Pendergrass. He was singing so good and I was enjoying myself so much I stood up and I started screaming. My sister pulled my coattail and said, sit down before you get us kicked out. <laughs> it was fantastic, okay? And then we have Lydell's Barbershop. There's the Kroger store, okay? Black Giant Supermarket we had on Door Street and the Panthers carryout. The one Clark's One Stop Record Shop, that was a fantastic record shop. And you were talking about the A-Tracks and stuff. You could go to Clark's and actually play your music right while you were in the store. Can't do that kind of thing anymore. You could order what you wanted and they would deliver it to you. You know, you wouldn't even have to wait for it. They would deliver it to you. So they had delivery way back in the day, long before we get everything delivered now. <laughs> Our food and everything, you know, you don't have to get up and do anything now just about, just have it delivered. So those were the good old days. Over here, I have a picture of Art Tatum. Pete Culp was very instrumental in the, working with the urban renewal part of Door Street and some things that were going on that really bothered him that he just did not care for. But he worked with them. There's Michael Duckworth, Black Knight's Men's Shop, the Bronze Raven, some pictures of that, and the Black Panther Organization, and Harvey Savage that had the food kitchen there. So just read those little articles if you get a chance about the flavor of Door Street, okay? That's my presentation. Thank you all for, for, for listening. I have a young lady here that wants to say something. Just one minute. Here you go. My voice might be loud enough anyway. Hello. Um, I had put on Facebook that I was coming to this event today, and a friend of mine who lives out of town, <clears throat> her name is Kathy Staunton Harrison. She said, if I were in town, this would be an inter interesting to attend. I grew up in this area on Norwood, went to Roosevelt Elementary. I'm sorry about that. Um, traveled to the Mont Branch Library, ate my senior prom meal at the spot. All right. <laughs> <laughs> had, had friends on Woodland. Dad worked at the Black Panther uh, carryout. Went to movies with my aunt at the World Theater. Loved to shop at the stores. Waited hours to drive cars on Friday and Saturday nights. So many memories. All right. So I told her I would share that. That is absolutely wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Is there anyone else that have anything they want to share about Door Street and your memories of Door Street? Anyone? Here we go. You might have to come a little closer. I don't have a memory, but I have a question for okay. you. So after 1974, when there was no evidence that the city was going to rebuild the corridor, was there a collective movement from the neighbors and the previous patrons of the businesses to force the city into action? Or what was the response when the city didn't rebuild it? OK. Now, I'm, I'm not a, an expert on Door Street completely. My research is, like I said, from the Toledo Journal book. But I can say this. I'm a, I'm a, I live in Toledo, and I know and I've seen what happened. There was plans with this urban renewal project, OK? to do some things for Toledo. And the same things that you see right now on Door Street, those were the plans. And that, that nothing has progressed since then. There has been a committee that has been, I think since like 2007 or something like that, working towards trying to get stuff back on the Door Street. But it, within their plans, they had a um, school that came to Door Street. They had a, uh, in the plans, Okay, they had that shopping center right on the corner where McDonald's is. That was in the plans. That came to fruition there on Door Street. They had some other things that um, a shopping center that's right down there off a of junction. All of those things were in the plans, but it was just such so much less than what was already there. And again, like I say, I am not an expert on Door Street. I have no idea what they did behind the scenes. I can only speak on what I actually lived and seen that came to Door Street. And you all know yourself, once those things were there, nothing else has came there since that time. OK, so the people that I have known, often known, that have been working, <coughs> trying to get things done and to add more things to Door Street are still working right now, trying to do those things, OK? So I'm hoping 
that they will have, you know, some good luck in getting stuff done. I would love to see houses back on Door Street, residential houses back on Door Street. That side that's all grass and hills, all the way down Door Street, is just sitting there. You know, I'd love to see houses there. I'd love to see um, businesses there. But that's what I would love to see. That's what all of us would love to see. And as far as that happening, I'm wishing the people that I know that are trying to, to get things done, I'm wishing that they have, have uh, some success in doing that. Okay? Would you like to say something, sir? No? Uh, no, I was just looking at the board. Okay, all right. Is there any? Only one place you didn't mention it was Creative Workshop. Please don't leave it out. Now, creative workshops, see, now I'm not familiar with that. That's why I said I'm not an expert oh, okay. at this. Would no, you no. like to tell us what that is? That I would be great because I definitely uh, uh, am not familiar with that. Well, I, it was a place where the teenagers from high school hung out. Mm -hmm. It was on the corner of Door and Horeg. Horeg, maybe? Right here the library is. Street from the library, right, right here, right. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was just a, <laughs> it was just a building we went to, but it that back then it had black, uh, black, light. black light, so your clothes lit up when you went in, and okay. just a place to party. And we went there in the um, mm -hmm. 70, 71, 72, mm -hmm. that era. So mm -hmm. you should have and fun. It was about right before they were getting ready to do the urban renewal. Right, stuff, right, and we never okay. saw any of it again. Okay, so I'm glad you said something about that because that was more than likely probably, because I'm 71, so, and I was born in 1950. So that's only 24 years for me to 1970, right. okay? So that's why I said as a young child, we lived on Door Street, but then as a teenager and a young adult, we went down to Door Street to do different things and to have a good time. So a lot of stuff on Door Street I, I don't even know about because it was so close to the urban renewal park. Okay, here you go, sir. I, uh, I worked for the Department of Community Development, which was uh, grew out of the old model cities program in the city of Toledo um, from 1974 to 80. And what was happening, the bigger picture nationally, what was happening at that time was uh, when Lyndon Johnson was president, the Great Society uh, and, and the Democratic super control of both houses of Congress generated a great deal of money that went into the cities uh, in large part as a response to the rioting and the poverty and you know all of the, all of the stuff that was going down in the 60s. The Office of Economic Opportunity was formed. Um, housing and urban development was, uh, I think, created in the mid-60s or early 60s. And... Um, the model cities program and urban renewal kind of urban renewal was quite old extended forward from the 1950s but the other thing that hit toledo and many other cities was the destruction caused by i-75 and the disruption of the neighborhoods and the uh, the fact that basically you're moving people away and then the adjoining business districts started suffering because you know the local population's gone. The foot traffic starts vanishing and that sort of stuff. But uh, the Nixon era, Nixon became president in '68, and um, Congress, because of the Vietnam War and the uh, ex expenditures related to that, Congress started cutting back on urban policy in as policy as well as uh, in terms of providing bucks. And by the um, by, Gerald Ford's presidency in '74, um, the new trend, and it had been started during the Nixon era, was so-called block grant funding, where they would just basically lump everything together into into a, a one bankroll and give local control to the governments, the local governments, to decide how to spend the money, and the Department of Community Development came into being as a result of that. So the, the federal f bucks were declining. Um, the urban renewal side of it stayed trendy because of the fact that that meant a lot of money to contractors and a lot of money just for superficial visual improvement because you're knocking down uh, buildings that are becoming dilapidated and abandoned and, and stripped. Um, 
this, I look back on that time as really a sad period. I had come up here, I'm not native, and I went to grad school, and one of my main concentrations in grad school was on urban renewal as a failed idea, and it's like in the early 70s. We, people knew that it was a very iffy proposition because money is not going to be guaranteed for the, in the amount and length of time that you really need governmentally because of the politics. But uh, there, so there was a lot of pressure exerted on the Department of Community Development in the mid-70s to simultaneously in multiple neighborhoods uh, divide up a much smaller pie um, into uh, all kinds of economic development and housing rehab and all of that. And I think the political pull was uh, unfortunate because there was never going to be enough resources. And this was an incredibly hurting neighborhood. I, I, it, I watched the bulldozing go year after year and it was just amazing to me. Like, why did you gut the neighborhood, you know, and then on, on some very thin belief that enough resources would somehow come into town to fix it. By the time there was serious attention given to downtown redevelopment, which is the late 77, 78, and the big subsidies for the OI Tower and, and Toledo Trust Building and all that, um, you know, it was too little too late. The, the, the festival marketplace uh, hung on for several years, but didn't last well very far into the 80s. So th this is, the fact is, I guess, the history of the United States and the history of Toledo is reflected. We stopped having an urban policy by the early 80s. What he's saying, you, you all, I want to say that this information that you see here, all these pictures and everything, there is a journal, the Toledo Journal, documented all of our history in a beautiful journal, okay? It's the main journal, the original journal is downtown in the, on the third floor in the local history library. Just go in there and ask for the history of Door Street, to the Toledo Journal. And it's two volumes, okay? They actually have one volume here at this branch. I've seen it laying right out there on one of the counters. And what he's just saying is exactly, almost word for word, sir, is in that, in that journal as to how the urban re renewal did all these things, not having enough money to take care of what they were, had planned to take care of. So if you get a chance, just go in and get it out and, and read it. You can't take it out of the library. You can't make pictures of it, okay, because it's so delicate and fragile. They'll scan anything you want. All of this stuff was scanned for me, okay, at the library, all of these pictures and everything. So if you get the opportunity to do that, I would go do it. And, and they literally scan the whole journal for me. You know, it costs, it'll cost you a little bit of money to do it, but they, they will scan the whole journal for you. And I had it put in a book for my own self to keep, you know, for myself, because it was just so beautiful, you know, to have something like that. Okay? There anything else? Anybody else have anything they want to say about Door Street? Anyone? Yeah, it'll, it'll go into the machine. I got you. I came in a little late, and I don't know if this was already said, but I remember reading that Door Street, and I can't give you the barrier of the, the boundaries, but it was Door Street, at one point was collectively the most money spent in a black neighborhood. It was like, it was filled, filled with uh entrepreneurs yes. and it generated when it when they counted the money it was more than anywhere else in the usa absolutely that's in the journal that's exactly what you're saying yeah. it's part of this this uh, this journal volume okay if you guys get the, if you guys get an opportunity to read it that's absolutely in the journal about how much money was generated on door street by us shopping and buying things more than any other area in the city you know that where black people lived or whatever it was also the biggest area where black people were employed, you know, 
because you had all these businesses and they employed black people. Even if it was a family member that worked for you, that was still a person that was employed. So you are absolutely correct, sir. Thank you. Thank you for that information. Anyone else have anything to say? It might be a little too far to yeah. get you, so if you come up. No worries. OK, there you go. And just talk into it so it gets recorded. Mm -hmm. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Tanasio Loudermill. Uh, I'm very glad and happy that this happened because um, uh, I know I'm uh, a bit younger, but I did uh, grow up on Door Street, and uh, I remember my mother uh, talking about what happened with the urban removal because she remembered uh, when Door Street used to be lively and full of black-owned businesses and how they all got wiped out. Um, because of this, um, I think Door Street has a really rich history that hasn't been told, as it should. So um, I've been actually looking to collect stories um, about the area from people that uh, remember these histories um, to uh, hopefully assemble a documentary. Um, so uh, I can be reached at, um, and uh, I hope to get a few contacts before I leave here today, uh, but uh, I can be reached at 567-377-2771. Um, oh. oh, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, again, uh, my number is 567-377-2771. Uh, Feel free to give me a call or shoot me a text. I really just want to be able to document uh, those stories on film and get those histories recorded while they're still here, um, just to make sure that uh, we all can understand how something like urban renewal or urban removal uh, can uh, impact a community. Uh, Tanasio Loudermill. What is your intention once you get all this information? What do you plan to do with it? Uh, plan is to uh, assemble a documentary film For and or? Uh, to to display to um, to premiere to like uh, invite the community out to and to hopefully have some. Uh, uh, community members uh, that participated in the film uh, there for like a talk back so we can just sort of have uh, a discussion um, about the concepts that are covered within it about the history of Dora Street um, I also want to jump into research on where this has happened in other areas of the country uh, where um, you know black owned businesses have been um, sort of systemically wiped out uh, through these kinds of processes Right. Thank you for doing that. More people get involved would be wonderful. Here you go, Sean. Well, you kind of prompted it. Uh, there's a gentleman who was going to be here tonight, Malcolm Cunningham. Some of you may know him. Uh, he's an excellent guy out uh, doing a lot of wonderful things, but unfortunately he got swept up. And he was going to be present here tonight because he is currently um, basically doing a survey about the history of Dora Street, asking people what they remember or what they've heard about it. Now, the purpose of this survey, as I understand it, is he's collecting all this data to make a policy case for further reinvestment and redevelopment of Dora Street. So if you're interested in seeing Dora Street revitalized or uh, to be, you know, contribute something that can be used toward uh, trying to get folks to pay attention and get some reinvestment, I would urge you I'm going to, I made a little sign-in sheet up here. If you could just put your name and a contact information, I'm going to give that to Malcolm. I wish he was here just getting it direct from you, but uh, in his absence, I'm going to go ahead and just try to collect data as I can. So I'm going to leave a, a notebook up here, and before you leave, if you could just fill out your contact info, if you've got anything to contribute to a survey like that, your memories or what you've heard about Door Street. If you have either of that kind of information, there's just a survey, you can take it either online or he can give you a copy in person to fill out if you're old school with pen and paper, okay? But I wanna make sure that that plug gets in here today because there, is, there are some steps we could take, even if they're small today, to try to help build the momentum tomorrow for trying to bring back a modicum of what we had on Door Street. So I just wanna get that out there while we had it. And is there anything else? I mean, people got any other comments or, or things they wanted to share? I will check with my mother. My mother actually lived on Door Street. She is 83 years old. And uh, about two years ago, we walked from Door and Collingwood all the way to Door and Upton, myself, my mom, and about 12 other people. And it was just remarkable, not just her 
vision of it or her memory, but there were other people that had grew up on the street of Dorf Street or were just very familiar. I don't know how much she could contribute as far, I don't know, but she definitely remembers houses and neighborhoods and she remembered families. So that's what was, was so fun to hear of the different families that she remembered and some of the people that we were walking with were related to these people. So she could actually tell them, my, her mother and your mother were best friends. So it was just kind of cool to hear that. But I'll ask her if she's interested in this. That would, that would be great for her to, to, to get with this gentleman that's uh, documenting from people that lived on Door Street. I read some of the different um, uh, comments that people were making that lived on Door Street, and it was really fantastic. So your mom would be able to really give some good insight yeah, as to, kind of, you know, to Door Street. Yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Is there any, any other things that anyone would like to say about Door Street right now? Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Sean, but I just want to say thank you to everybody for coming out. Believe me, I did not know it was going to be these many people. <laughs> so I was a little shaky, you know, uh, but it was fantastic. I really enjoyed myself. And uh, if you all get the opportunity, please go and get that journal and just look at it and sit down and read it. It is fantastic. Even the second volume is even better, okay, than the first volume. So if you get the chance, go ahead on and do that. Thank you, Sean for allowing me to do this. Thank you, Mott Library, for allowing me to do this. It was just fantastic. All right. Make sure we get a round of applause for Evelyn. Yeah. But, but it was you know, the seventies right. and <laughs> tuition was seventy four percent coming from the state legislature. And now it's like sixteen dollars. Wasn't it something like seventeen dollars a crowd? That's the uh -huh. yes, <laughs> yeah. so that for a legal this is Roosevelt neighborhood. I'm in Roosevelt. Yeah. So um, that's a minute. Right. And how can we always say that credit for a course? So you know, yes, yeah. So not really what it was back in the church. Yeah, you never get that. We can get. Okay, what's your reason? I'm here to face the I'm 